stellar evolution. It's something that, at least in my mind, was hammered into my brain case at an early age. Over time, stars like our own will burn through their main fuel source. Once that happens, they will expand, becoming a red giant, before eventually going through a second expansion where they shed their gassy layers until they become what's known as a planetary nebula. Larger stars go through a similar process, but once all of their main fuel source is chewed through, they expand and then go supernova, leaving behind a remnant known as a white dwarf neutron star or even a black hole. Well, depending on their size at least. But the discovery of two stars that have surprised scientists by the fact that they're actually burning helium are raising some intriguing questions in regard to our understanding of stellar evolution. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm Eric Malachite and this is Science Get. Stars are born from within molecular clouds, normally referred to as stellar nurseries. The gas and dust within nebulae form new stars when that material starts to collapse in on itself. As that gas and dust becomes more and more compacted, it also separates off into smaller segments. These smaller segments of would-be stellar material then go on to collapse into the stellar cores that will one day lie at the center of a star. But this is all before the nuclear reaction even starts. These still forming star cores are known as protostars. During the time that the stellar core is forming, i.e. as the dust and gas is contracting in on itself, the protostar's temperature goes through the roof, causing nuclear reactions to start happening, converting hydrogen into helium. Remember this part, hydrogen to helium, because that's going to be very important later on in the video. Pretty much every star spends the main portion of its life converting hydrogen to helium as the main source of fuel. But once that hydrogen is exhausted and the star begins using the helium in the core as its new fuel source, things take a turn. These events cause the temperature inside the star to skyrocket. At the same time, the shell of inert hydrogen is burned. During this stage of the star's life, it converts helium into carbon. Both the respective helium and hydrogen shells around the core of an aging star ignite. All of this causes the star to simultaneously lose mass and for the outer layers to expand into a red giant. This is where things can vary between different types of stars. For stars similar to our own, i.e. those under eight solar masses, eventually the star's outer layers will be completely shed and a planetary nebula will be formed. Eventually, this will lead to the formation of a white dwarf, a type of stellar remnant. But for stars eight times more massive than our own, the core becomes inert, consisting mainly of the carbon that was converted from helium. However, in some cases, the core never becomes hot enough to actually start burning that carbon. The star's core begins to collapse. This is due to the fact that it's no longer producing energy. Burning carbon means that the star is converting it to neon. From here, the star's core will continue to burn heavier and heavier elements until at last, all that's left to burn is iron. Now, if you'll recall our video on how to kill the sun, iron spells certain doom for stars if that's the only fuel left to burn. That's because it's impossible for a star to burn iron. So all nuclear fusion in the core stops. Throughout a star's life, it is constantly fighting against its own gravity. The nuclear fusion reaction in the core generates pressure that keeps the star's own gravity at bay. Without that reaction, there's nothing to stop the star from collapsing in on itself. To simplify things from here, if the star is massive enough, the collapse of the star will be halted by the presence of neutrons. If this happens, the star will become a stellar nightmare object known as a neutron star. Oh, and because all of this happens in a matter of seconds, and because the star's collapse was halted so suddenly, an immense shockwave tears through the remaining layers of the star, causing it to go supernova. After the supernova, the neutron star is the only thing left of the star. However, if the star is even more massive, those neutrons that stop the complete collapse of the star yet yeah, their presence won't stop the core from collapsing. A completely collapsed star of this size is thought to produce a stellar mass black hole. Okay, with that out of the way, we now know how modern astronomers understand stellar evolution. So, we understand that when a star begins to burn helium, it should expand into a red giant, right? Well then, why is it that these two particular stars aren't red giants and are actually burning helium? Let's attempt, at least, to find out. Astronomers have discovered something seriously surprising 10,000 light years from Earth. These two stars, PG1654 plus 322 and PG1528 plus 025, are surrounded by a perplexing mixture of oxygen and... carbon? 
If you recall in the previous section, we talked about how helium will convert to carbon, and carbon will then start to convert to neon, and this process will continue as the star converts heavier and heavier elements. At the same time, a star like this should be a red giant, but these two particular stars are burning at insanely high temperatures. And at least judging from this illustration from Caltech, though their radius indicates that the core would be helium, they are not in fact red. By our understanding of stellar evolution, in order to have exterior layers made up of oxygen and carbon, the cores of these stars should not be burning helium, but they are. According to the primary astronomer who wrote this paper, a man named Klaus Werner at the University of Tübingen, Germany, when asked by Gizmodo, he says that, Normally, we expect stars with these surface compositions to have already finished burning helium in their cores, and to be on their way to becoming white dwarfs. These new stars are a severe challenge to our understanding of stellar evolution. Basically, these stars should not exist based on our current understanding of stellar evolution. So either stellar evolution is far more complicated than we originally thought, or there's more at play here than we would expect in a normal star's life cycle. And fortunately, Klaus Werner and company are attempting to answer that question. Based off of a second paper that Klaus and their team published, they believe that these two strange stars originated from the collision of two stars. Each, in the second paper, they basically argue that if the right conditions were to be achieved, then a hypothetical... Yes, this is definitely speculation. A hypothetical white dwarf that is currently burning helium into carbon and oxygen could merge with another object, thereby forming an entirely new class of stellar object. If such a Frankenstein merger were to happen, then according to Klaus, a more massive object would break the lower mass object up due to its gravity. In other words, this would not be an even fusion of stellar material. No, instead, one of the stars would essentially consume the other like Hannibal Lecter eating his cellmate with a nice Chianti. This is primarily speculation on the part of the astronomers involved with this study, and they're now preparing to test and even challenge the assumptions made by the standard models for stellar evolution that we just went over in this video. It's probably not a surprise that our understanding of stellar evolution as a whole might not be fully complete. It really wasn't that long ago that we thought ours was the only galaxy in the Milky Way. So who knows, maybe the argument for a collision between white dwarfs of varying sizes doesn't fully explain how these superheated helium stars could have formed, and we'll be hearing about this in the near future. But you know, as one commenter on Gizmodo points out, isn't it possible in such a vast universe that a few oddballs exist? And frankly, it's kind of difficult to argue with that kind of logic. That's all I've got for you today, but if you dug this content, be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and share this with someone who loves star space, sarcasm, and science. And hey, if you dig neutron stars, check out this other video on one of the weirdest compound stellar objects that could theoretically exist. Hint, it's called a thorn Zhiktov object. Wow, check out all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Jockey.